Welcome back friends. In this video we will be talking about the Tacman system which is a part of the real time PCR analysis. When working with genetically engineered crops, scientists may need to know a particular plant or seed contains a transgene. Sometimes consumers want to know if the foods they eat contain in ingredients from the genetically engineered co crops or not. Conventional PCR methods can measure the presence or absence of a transgene in the sample but are not effective in measuring how many copies there are of the particular gene inside the plant cell. In this PCR we can tell sample A is the only one containing a transgene but how many copies are there we cannot know that. Real-time or quantitative PCR method have been developed which are able to more precisely measure gene copy numbers present in a plant. This animation illustrates the Tacman system. As in conventional PCR, the Tacman system copies a segment of a chromosome's genetic code such as transgene. This is necessary to have enough copies to measure with laboratory methods. Scientists can then calculate original copy number in the growth growing plant. So we are having these ingredients DNA, nucleotide sequences and then forward and reverse primers which are really important for a PCR reaction then the TAC polymerase. The same components needed for the conventional PCR are also combined in the TACMAN PCR system. Now here DNA is the genetic code to be copied, nucleotides used to create the complementary DNA strand and primers are specific to the section of the DNA to be copied. Now this reaction buffer and water enables the chemical reactions to take place. On the other hand, TAC polymerase is the enzyme that reads the original DNA sequence and make a recombinant or complementary copy. In addition, TAC requires uh, a specifically TACMAN requires a specifically labeled probe. On the 5' end of a reporter molecule that gives off a fluorescent dye. On the 3' end of the quencher molecule that blocks the reporter's light when located near to the reporter. Reaction buffer and water is added, then one by one the, all the ingredients are added in the system. In Tacman, plates of 96 separate experiments or reactions can be done at one time. Let's zoom in one of the reaction to see what is taking place. We are having all the ingredients in our tube. All of these components remain in the solution unseen by the naked eye. A closer look at the DNA segment to be copied shows two DNA strands bound together in a complementary orientation from 3' to 5' and from 5' to 3'. After the components of Tacman PCR have been added to the microliter plate, micro tighter plate, sorry, the lids are closed and placed into a thermal cycler to be heated and cooled in several cycles. Once inside the thermal cycler, the temperature increases to 95 degrees Celsius, just like the traditional PCR. At this temperature, the DNA will become single stranded. This is a close up at the molecular level, demonstrating what happens as the reactions are heated.
As the template approaches boiling, the bonds between the DNA strand breaks and strand separates. Once the DNA strand separates, the replication phase of PCR can begin. The tube is cooled to 60 to 62 degrees Celsius to allow the probe and primers to bind their respective complementary sequences on the DNA template. The probe and primers bind according to a normal DNA pairing, that is, A pairs with T and G pairs with C. Next, TAC polymerase binds to the 3' end of the primers. TAC reads the original DNA strand and adds nucleotide to extend the length of the complementary copy. When TAC reaches the bound probe, its footprinting or exonucleus functions will remove the probe one nucleotide at a time. TAC then replaces the probe nucleotide with a new one. Since the reporter and quencher are now separated, fluorescence is estimated and measured. In the next cycles of PCR, these two DNA segments will be replicated again and the amount of fluorescence produced increases exponentially. The two copies of DNA have now become four. These PCR molecules or process will continue and in a new few hours, millions of identical DNA copies will be made. This is the process which takes place inside each of the 96 wells kept in the thermal cycler. The amount of fluorescence given off are measured at the reg regular intervals by the computer. Results are obtained much quicker and with less starting the DNA than is conventional PCR. The machine is able to detect not only the presence of genes but also indicate how many copies of a gene are in sample. Click forward to understand this data. The first graphs are from the GMO DNA standards and the final is a sample with unknown GMO concentration. Now the GMO means genetically modified organism. Along the X axis is the cyclic number and the Y axis is the amount of fluorescence. At each cycle fluorescence is measured, where we see background non-distinct -di graphs. Now we see a graph beginning to show exponential increase to fluorescence, referring back to our record. It contains 10% GMO. We also see our 1% GMO DNA standard beginning to go through the exponential increase. At approximately cycle 27 the 1% GMO sample crosses the CT at cycle 31 the graph for 1.1% GMO crosses the CT and the last DNA strand 0.01% GMO crosses the CT at approximately at cycle number 34 therefore the more copies of a gene present the quicker the amount of fluorescence emitted will reach the CT threshold Finally, to the graph, we added an unknown GMO sample data. In this example, it falls exactly along with 0.1% DNA standard graph. Tachman measures amount of the gene during the exponential phase of the PCR, indicated by the arrows. Conventional PCR, though makes measurement at the end of the PCR, therefore, it is unable to distinguish between the gene copy numbers of different samples. That's how we can measure it utilizing the Tacman system and I hope it will help you. Thank you.